Now we're going to talk about Salatin stuff. Uh, these pins are about 10 feet by 20 feet when done according to Salatin style. Uh, the stuff we saw earlier was not a proper Salatin style pin. It was much too small. Uh, you usually move these pins uh, once or twice per day. And, and rather than scorched earth, there are several schools of thought. Um, I think Salatin goes for like eat 90%. And then move, and I and that bothers me. Um, I think eating 30% before moving to the next paddock is good, um, and and then we could we could even move into a discussion of about um, uh, raising cattle without hay, where um, you know they eat what's out there and available to them throughout the year. But that's that's a rather long discussion. I've got a podcast about it if you're really interested in it. Um, Salatin uh, claims that it cuts his feed bill 20%. Um, I did Salatin style for several years. I, I do believe it's true. It cuts your feed bill, but um, there were a lot of things I, I struggled with with it. Um, <coughs> the vegetation factor. Uh, so there's, there's some vegetation in there, and, and it's not great vegetation, but it, there's, there's some. Uh, the bug factor, not that great. Again, the bug's got to come to you. Uh, the poop cleaning factor is perfect. Never clean poop. Not a problem. Uh, poop hygiene factor, they are all, they're still standing around in their own shit, and that really bothers me. Um, the work factor, it's a, it's a lot of work. You've got to do this twice a day. If you've got your system set up for twice a day, you've got to get out there and do it twice a day. Um, and, and so you're, you're married to everything again. Uh, uh, natural habitat, there's no shrubs or trees inside of those. Uh, confinement fa factor, it's, it's a lot better than um, factory farms, but still, there's, there's still quite a few chickens in there and it's not that big of a space. Um, food cost factor, you know, it, it, I imagine it's, it's better than factory farm, but you're still, you know, like I said, uh, I was doing this and I ended up uh, uh, selling the meat for just a bit more than I paid for the feed. This was my first attempt at doing an alternative pin, um, and I, I learned some extremely valuable lessons. Uh, so this is PVC pipe. Uh, if you're gonna do it this style, you need PVC pipe that um, will tolerate cold and UV. This did not. How long did it last? It lasted about two months, <laughs> and then it became like a big ball of duct tape holding it together. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, you, you can see the blue yeah. on it. Like, you can yeah. see the blue all around there where I glued the joints. The joints weren't the problem. It's the pipes just disintegrated. And the sunlight. Yeah, yeah sunlight. And then when winter yeah. came, it's like it almost turned to, like, shards of dust. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was terrible. But there's one thing in this design that I ended up really, really liking, and I moved it into all of my future designs. Because we're going to see my, all my Salatin designs torture you with my pictures from vacation, sort of, or experimentville. Um, <coughs> can you see it right there? So it's a little door. And so what I did was, is I always had one of these things as a spare, and I would move it up so that the doors lined up. And then I would open the two doors, and all the chickens would go <laughs> into the other one, and I'd close the doors. And, and the reason is, is like what Salatin does is that he's got a rig so that he picks up one end about three inches and there's wheels under it and then he drags it and then all of the chickens run to the other end because they're afraid of you and you're moving it and then every once in a while a chicken gets caught under that back edge and kind of gets run over and is always okay but, you know, it really bothers me that that happens to even one chicken. And it, I probably should just stop being such a wuss, but I don't like it. I don't like the idea that I just ran over a chicken. And, and it's like, so sometimes I'd have the kids go stand over on the other end, so the chickens would kind of move in about halfway. But then they're, like, coming up too close to my end and getting out. Damn it. Ah! So I liked, I liked that little door a lot. And, and so... Um, Here's, here's my next design. This is uh, cattle panels. Um, and then on, on the ground, I don't think you can see it there, but I've got clothesline, which contains steel cable. Clothesline is designed to not stretch. So it's going to hold it in that shape 
indefinitely. Attached to the two by fours. Yes. Pups or loop eyes, right? Yeah. Okay. This design worked out really great. And then I would I would basically rebuild this, and then I would I would build another one of these. And you could kind of I think you could kind of see the old design over there in that field over there. But what I would do is I'd build a second one of these uh, out of three pieces and throw a tarp over it. And then I'd lift the fence that would then be between the two, and they would all race through. And then I'd lower the fence and then you know hook it all up again and, and go on. Problem is, it turned out to take 25 minutes to move, move them one unit. That was just too much time. It was just too, way too slow. Um, so we, we dropped this one. This is one of those garages you can buy at Costco, and I took the legs off, but the thing just ended up being so fucking heavy. It was like, you know what? This is, this is too much of a grunt fest to get it to, to move at all. <laughs> Poly pipe? <laughs> Poly pipe. Poly pipe. Is it the same as poly pipe? I've never heard it called ABS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, is it similar? I don't know. So this is this is this is poly pipe. It's relative. Well, obviously, it's got some flexibility to it. It's not too terribly rigid, um, but it comes in it, it, it comes in coils. I thought it would be a little stouter. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, I, I don't know what just happened there. Um, this is welding rod. Um, this, is, this is a quarter inch steel rod. And um, I, I welded this together and then we introduced the clothesline so it had the basic shape. But um, I was starting to think about like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to, am I going to paint this? I'm not going to galvanize it. I'd like to get away from galvanizing anything, and and paint is just going to rub off the bottom. So I ended up doing a hybrid solution. Um, so I, I I brought the poly pipe in. The problem is poly pipe doesn't last. Like like poly pipe out in the sun might last like 10 years, 15 years. The fact that it doesn't last means that it's off-gassing, like it's becoming brittle. And so then now my, you know, and I'm trying to like find a way to do this much, much cleaner. But I got to the point where I'd put a bunch of the chicken wire on it and I made it much higher so that shrubs could be included um, because I wanted to get some more natural habitat. But it's like while I was building this that I got the idea to, to ditch this entirely and go with chicken paddocks. Because I was using paddocks for the goats and, and for the hogs, and we were just having amazing, awesome luck. It was like, you know, everything was just magical wherever we did paddock ship systems. And so then I started moving to the, the, the chicken paddock system um, with the idea of like, you know, basically rather than building these portable pens, they'd be kind of like fixed pens, and there could be trees and shrubs in there. And uh, so all the benefits of all the best of the systems. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about animal husbandry, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. Mm -hmm.